Hey everyone, my name is Taryn and thank you so much for stopping by my channel, Nicole Flower House. I grow cut flowers here in North Carolina in zone 7B and this week is my Valentine's Day update and a few other exciting things that I need to get done in the garden. First off, let's talk about the Valentine's Day ranunculus. I did get blooms. That was very exciting. However, I got nine blooms, nine. Um, I'm really glad that I didn't promise Valentine's Day bouquets to anybody because I didn't have enough flowers. Am I going to give up on growing ranunculus for Valentine's Day? No, I'm not going to give it up, but I'm also just going to add some other things to my experiments. I want to add anemones and tulips to the mix. I won't have to completely rely on the ranunculus and I'll have other things to offer. Now, I want to show you the ranunculus plants. I've moved them outside and I'm going to retire those girls. Well, maybe not retire them, but I am going to plant them out into the garden. It's very sunny today, which I'm really excited about, but it's horrible lighting, but it is what it is. So let's take a look at this ranunculus and then I'm going to get them planted out into the farm or the garden. I don't know, am I a farm or a garden? Someone tell me. According to Lisa Mason Ziegler, I'm a farm because I sell flowers. <laughs> so anyways, let's take a look at these ranunculus. All right, here they are. It's hard to pick them out almost amongst all the weeds that I have. You can see there are still blooms and I'm still having quite a bit of pest pressure on these. So these are not something I can sell. Even the few that I did get, I'm not selling because of the aphids. I'm washing them off, but I still like find them inside the petals even after they've bloomed. So there are plenty of buds coming on. So not a complete bust, but they are going to live outside now. And maybe I'll have earlier blooms on these than my ones that have been growing outside all winter. And someone on the last video wanted to see the root systems on these plants and they're growing out of these containers so i'm sure they're root bound yeah i can't even pull this plant out of here so i'm sure they're gonna love being out of the containers and out into the garden you guys lately i've been having a really hard time with scully <laughs> digging in the garden beds this year just seems to be really bad for that if you guys have dogs do you have to keep them out of your farm because i like that she chases the critters away she does chase after the deer and the rabbits the other thing that i'm going to be working on today is the first tulip harvest it's not a ton of tulips but they're starting oh It's not a ton of tulips, but they're starting to come on and oh my gosh, that stupid thing. That grill is so ugly and it's in all of my shots. I don't want to see it. It's, it's so sunny. I don't know how I'm going to film this video today. <laughs> I'm tripping. Okay. So I'm learning a lot from last year about my tulip harvest and I have a cooler now. Well, it's not a walk-in cooler, but it's a chest freezer that converts to a refrigerator. So anyways, I have a cold, dark place to put my tulips. So this year, the instant they're ready and those buds are colored up, I'm getting out of the ground and into my cooler and hopefully holding on to those until I can sell them. Now. I pulled a few yesterday in the rain, which is not ideal. They did not come out as cleanly as I would have liked. Um, some of the stems still broke off the bulb. This year, I am going to try to dry store these with the bulbs on. And the ones that break will obviously be the ones I work on selling first. So yesterday, the compost was so heavy and so wet and it was raining. That's not when you want to harvest tulips. So 
Today I'm gonna try again. Hopefully I have better luck, but I will get those tulips pulled and put into the cooler. My fabric that I have these covered up with isn't staying on very well either. I'm using the frost fabric to keep the deer out of here, which has worked for me well in previous seasons. So you can see how good they're looking. I don't like that I still have disease like this. This is a brand new location for my tulips. It's a new spot, new compost, new mulch, everything's new. So again, it's not very much, but I don't like seeing it. I'll have to keep an eye on that. So I, I do want to say there's hardly any roots on these and these stems are very weak. Um, they're, they're breaking up extremely easily. So I'm not really happy with this result. Um, and plus like look how small that bud is. Um, this is not rotten. This is like intact. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on with this. I don't know if it's this variety, if they'll all be like that, or if it's just, you know, these, it's called, whoops, dropped it. <laughs> it's called Gamay, Gamay. So that's like one thing, I'm trying not to like take things personally, right? And just be like, okay, maybe it was, you know the growing conditions or something but just to kind of be curious and take note and just realize that maybe it's the variety or something another thing i am let me turn this so you can see me better another thing i'm heavily considering for next year is the hydroponic tulips i'm definitely interested in that workshop and giving that a try for one thing, if I can grow these indoors and like force the bloom times more specifically, that's helpful. But also I don't have to worry about the soil borne diseases and finding places to rotate these tulips every seven or every year for seven years. That's a huge amount of space. And I just, if there's a different and better way, I'm also interested in that. So I do, find it odd to grow plants, not in the soil, but a tulip is a little bit different because its food source is right here. So that is something else I'm also considering. So I'm gonna pull the rest of these tulips. I'm not real thrilled with them, but they're still beautiful color and everything, but we'll, we'll have to see how the season moves along. Uh, today is February 13th. 
just for context. So we have a lot of tulips, a lot of time left, so I'm not gonna get too down, but I'm not really liking the results so far. This was a snake skin, but it's just trash. It <laughs> really, whew, that was scary. <laughs> that looks like it's about it for that row. So maybe like a dozen tulips. I did break some stems, but I have some orders for later this week. So those will get used. They're really short. It seems like for some of them, the only stem length I'm getting is the six inches that I buried in the compost. I do remember last year though, my tulips that bloomed first were also very short. They're, these are gonna get a lot more sunlight. I'm gonna let the sun hit these. There's water collecting in the leaves, so that may be contributing to that disease that I was seeing. So the fact that we're getting some nice heat and sun today will hopefully dry that up. And I'm hopeful that I will still get nice tulips this year. I'm going to go check the other two rows to see what's going on under those row covers and see if there's anything ready. But yesterday when I checked it was just these um, magenta ones. So. I don't know if you can hear or see that right here. We had to move the barrels and unhook them and do all that when we got our siding redone. And there's several leaks. So these need worked on again. 
I hope that's the last time I ever have to move these. They're so useful. Like I love having all this rainwater, but the system's not perfect. And I think the number of times we've taken it apart and moved it and put it back together is probably affecting it. So hopefully I can figure those two leaks out. We got like a ton of rain yesterday. Let's look. Yeah, two inches. Two inches of rain, over two inches, almost two and a quarter. So that was a lot of rain. The barrels captured a lot of water, but they're leaking. So they don't leak to a rate where like it's gonna empty them very fast. So I'll still be able to use a lot of this water, but we need to get that figured out. Here's the tulip harvest. Got them rinsed off. And when you're storing them dry with the bulb on, they really have to be dry. So I'm gonna take these in the dark in a cool place where they can dry off. planting the rest of the ranunculus in this tunnel. That's another option I have for Valentine's Day next year is to possibly get some greenhouse plastic for this cattle panel tunnel that I have. I haven't really utilized it in that way, but I've seen others who have built pretty much high tunnels out of cattle panels. So that's another option. I'm not gonna give up on local flowers for Valentine's Day. I think it was a good learning year and I will definitely keep trying things out. If you enjoyed this video and like this content, give me a thumbs up. 
And the best way to support me and my channel is to subscribe and share it with your flower-loving friends. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.